This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Okay, so we're just gonna sing. All right. Hello, welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. This is your weekly dose of Technolust. Um, normally there's someone over here that says, I'm Santa Mars, and everybody goes, yay! Paul, what do, are we really doing this? We're gonna have a problem here. Season 10 is next episode, like, like episode 10, season one, reverse that. Anyway, uh, Shannon, something happened. You're going to find out here real soon. We got some security cam footage. We're looking for your help. Uh, but that's not why you tuned in. You tuned in because, hey, it's the end of Hack 5 Season 9, and we are ramped up because every August uh, in Las Vegas, the just wonderful conference that is DEF CON. I sure I don't need to explain it to you guys, but this is the big one, and we're super excited to be part of the, uh, the whole DEF CON experience, if you will. So, of course, we took the whole Hack team and traveled down to Las Vegas for uh, to find out what is going on at the uh, the nation's largest hacker conference and this is our first part of our two-part series on DEF CON this year and we hope you guys enjoy it stick around to the end for more information on Shannon and that thing but uh, until then just gonna remind you guys to uh, trust your technologist and I will see you a little later yeah huh. okay Paul I guess we'll like pan somewhere or yeah, is that, is that good? All right. Yay. Hey, evil server. Where are the guys? They were working last night. My guess is they will be late. Jeez, I'm kind of surprised after Vegas. Wow. Uh, it was good. We shot a whole lot of stuff for Hack 5 and Hack Tip. Oh yeah? Defcon 19, very excited to be checking out the Wasp again. Mike, dude, Rich, so excited to see you guys again. This thing has been the talk of the con. It was so much so last year and even more now. Tell me about the upgrades. What's going on with the Wasp? Well, like uh, like we talked about last year, we went ahead and uh, and put uh, Open BTS and the uh, USRP on the plane, so we can now do uh, GSM cell phone middling, uh, which is the, uh, the the big interest this year. Uh, and additionally, we made some changes to the flight surfaces, and uh, we've upgraded the hardware. So uh, we're now supporting a one gigahertz processor uh, versus the 500 that we had last year. Uh, and we've redone our base station, so our base station now is a lot smaller and, uh, and a heck of a lot more versatile. Cool. So tell me about just the practical capabilities first before we get into the nitty gritty. You mentioned OpenBTS. You mentioned uh, you've got all the new Wi-Fi cards in here. What are the different vectors of attack that this thing can perform? But well, we've got both active and passive attacks um, with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and GSM. We can do you know, your typical Kismet, war flying. Um, we can incorporate the, the Ubertooth One is on the aircraft now as well, so we can do uh, grabbing of Bluetooth packets. But we can also do you know active attacks. We have uh, onboard 4G internet connection, so we can provide internet service via rogue access point. You know, suddenly we're now flying Starbucks. Uh, connect through us, and we can watch all your your nice porn. Um, we can do the same with uh, the GSM. We can do uh, the, the passive attacks of just grabbing the, the MZs and, and then potentially reusing those to make phone calls on your dime. Or we can actually reroute your phone calls and, and send them through a SIP or VoIP backhaul uh, and, and actually record or redirect your phone calls. 
How hard was it to implement the open BTS for the, the GSM cell phone hacking stuff? Well, it should not be hard, but uh, as with all things open source, the documentation sometimes does not reflect reality. Um, so uh, although it, it is doable, it's difficult. Um, there's a steep learning curve. Um, but it is eminently possible by anybody with enough uh, enough wherewithal to. Right, because you guys are, are standing on the shoulders of giants here with like Chris Paget's research on here, dragons like uh, Kismet, it's like, like it's, it's all of these off the shelf stuff. Uh, how much of this is just, you know, uh, off the shelf like the avionics and whatnot? And how much of it were, did you have to build custom? Very little of it is anything that we actually custom built. Uh, just some glue scripting uh, to do uh, the. Okay. Yeah, to handle all the componentry uh, and make a talk. Uh, but beyond that, almost 100% of the plane is either commercial off-the-shelf stuff or open sourced. Uh, so very little of it is, that, is actually our work uh, beyond the putting it together and making it fly. Actually, I think that's the beautiful aspect of it because this just says like anyone can go out today and build one of these. What is, uh, again, the platform that this is uh, sitting on here, this drone? It was built on an old Army uh, FQM-117B target drone. Uh, so the, uh, the target drone. Wait, so this yes. was meant to be shot down? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, a soldier would fly it around, um, and his buddies out in the field would aim their rifles and practice their anti-aircraft gunnery skills on on this uh, scale model of a, of a MIG fighter. Uh, they, of course, went out of use uh, in the mid '80s, and uh, Rich happened to have one in his basement, um, and so we used that one. And, uh, and it worked out so well, we bought uh, as many as we could find. Dude, hooray for army surplus. <laughs> yes, thanks Uncle Sam. Yeah, so what are the, uh, what are the payload c capabilities of this guy? Are you, are you kind of reaching the limits now that you've added so much more to it? Well, the, the design specifications for the, for the airframe itself uh, call for up to 20 pound takeoff weight. We're sitting at right around 14 pounds. Um, so we've got a little bit more weight room that if we needed, we could add. Dude, some that's six more pounds of hacking right there. <laughs> six more pounds of a lot of stuff. Uh, the issue we're running into now is actually physical space without actually you know, starting to hang things off the bottom or underneath the wings. Or um, we're, we've, we've got a, a tiny little space right in here that's big enough for something. This space know. for rent. <laughs> yeah, your logo here. That's awesome. So uh, USB hub, you see the Uber tooth here. We've got the 4G. Uh, what is this guy right here? That's the USRP, specifically the uh, oh. Specifically, the uh, 900, the RFX 900 uh, daughter so, board. So this is what lets you do the software-defined radio. What frequencies? Uh, ISM. It's a. Uh, oh, okay, so it's a 2.4 gigahertz spectrum. Yes. Uh, well, no, it's uh, it's going to be in the 900. It's oh, in the 900 yeah, megahertz spectrum. 25.2. Nice. Uh, so, uh, yes, we're uh, we're legal. We're inside the. Uh, Ham radio, 30 yeah, let me, centimeter band. Let me talk to you about that because you know, flying around a drone with a whole bunch of you know wireless hacking gear, you would you would expect it to raise a couple of eyebrows. Um, how does how is this you know as far as uh, in the eyes of the FAA and in the eyes of the FCC? Well, as far if you want to build a video site or if your website has a play button, I recommend getting a .tv domain. You see, a .tv website lets you showcase your original content and create a unique site, not just another YouTube channel. Just head over to domain.com and search for the perfect .tv domain for your new idea. And then use the coupon code HAK5 at checkout to save an extra 15%. And if you need hosting for your .tv website, don't forget about 